Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another 10 pens currently inked up this week. I think let's go through these briefly one by one. We'll go through them in a little bit more detail and then we'll do a writing sample. So from left to right, we have a Visconti Blue Ripple, a Visconti Leonardo Da Vinci Machina, a Visconti Homo Sapiens Midnight in Florence, a Visconti Homo Sapiens Caput Mundi, a Visconti Ducali Palazzo di Sassuolo, a Twisby Vac 700R, a Visconti Rotary, a Visconti Divina Elegance in Green, a Visconti Divina Desert Springs, and we have a Visconti Medici Il Magnifico in the Lapis Lazuli. So let's take a look at these pens in a little bit more detail. So this is the stunning Visconti Blue Ripple. Now I know the first thing you're going to say is that this is a black pen with a cracked white ice effect. But if you look at where my studio lights are reflecting, you will see that it has a tinge of blue there. And you can see it on that bridge clip. So this is actually a very dark blue pen, not a black pen. Now, there are two versions of this. There is a blue, actually there's several. <laughs> now, now that I come to think about it, there's the blue ripple, there's a black ripple, and there's also one in gold as well. So this is a beautiful pen, and this is a pen that uh, I wanted to get for a long time, and it's been really on my radar and on my wish list for a long time. And a friend picked up one of these a while back, uh, Tony, and uh, he's been nagging at me ever since to pick one up and said I wouldn't regret it. Well, my wallet regrets it, but I don't regret it. Uh, this is a beautiful pen. So you can see here that this is a beautiful, beautiful pen. And you can see there the hallmarks as well. This really is a beautiful pen. So uh, I will have a review of this at some point, uh, but this is a brilliant pen. Uh, it's a double reservoir. It's a power vac filler, and it actually has one of the older style 18 karat gold nibs there that you can see. And I got this in a medium because, hey, I like medium pens, and I guess I, I just... I'm a sucker for a medium pen. I do find that it's a lot more easier to write with in a notebook or write a letter with. As much as I like broad writing pens, I do like and do gravitate towards more medium pens. So I have this one inked up this week. I also have the trusty Visconti Leonardo da Vinci Machina. And what is there to say about this pen? It's expensive. Uh, it has a super oversized box, if you've seen my unboxing review. But this scrimshaw is absolutely amazing. So this really is something special. Uh, this comes with the newer style 18 karat gold nib from Visconti. This is uh, the in-house nib. But uh, again, this is a medium nib. But this writes really really nicely so again it's it's another one that I, I i've been having inked up a lot because i like pens that i like the look of and i like even more pens that write nice and if a pen looks nice and writes nice then it's a pen that i'm gonna probably have inked up for a while and this is definitely the case with the machina so i have that one inked up again this week the next pen is the visconti homo sapiens midnight in florence and again this is another beautiful uh, sort of ribbon swirl pen uh now you will see here that this is a really nice sort of dark purpley bluish blurple and again i have this one inked up again this week because it's just a really good stable writer, a workhorse writer. So this is a 23 cap palladium medium nib. And I just find the Homo Sapiens range of pens 
so sort of easy to write with. They're so comfortable for long writing sessions. And I think that's also why I like the Machina as well, because you can see here, it's pretty much the same size and shape. It, it's just very comfortable for me in my hand. It, I'm, I guess it's probably not comfortable for everybody, but it is probably the most comfortable pen that, that I have uh, in my collection. So uh, I do gravitate a lot towards the Visconti Homo Sapiens pens because of that. And then I have another one inked up here. And again, this is a Visconti Homo Sapiens. It's a Caput Mundi. Uh, I do have my initials here on the uh, cap finial. Uh, again, it's a double reservoir. It's a power filler. So it holds two and a half milliliters of ink. And it has a medium 23 cap palladium nib there. And again, this just writes exquisitely lovely. So I, I just love how this pen writes. And... Uh, I, I guess I have had this inked up a lot over the course of maybe the last year. And uh, maybe not so much recently, I think, if memory serves me right. But it's it's another one of these pens that I like writing with. And, and I like the look of it as well. So for me, that's another one that I have inked up. And then this one I haven't had inked up for quite a while. This is a Visconti, and this is the Ducali Plazo di Sassuolo. So this basically is the Palazzo or uh, Palace of Ducali, and you'll see it here inscribed on the body. It's a little bit harder to see there with it inked up, uh, but this also has this Yellow Dawn style material going on here. Uh, it's what Visconti called Yellow Dawn. You've got the old style Voyager kill clip there. Uh, this is just a beautiful pen. Uh, it's a little bit thinner than the Homo Sapiens. Uh, I have this inked up. You can see that ink sloshing around there. Um, it is a demonstrator. And this has the old style 18 cat gold nib. And this is a medium nib there. But... Again, this writes really, really nicely. So I have that one inked up this week as well. And I normally find that I can empty these fairly quickly um, when I do a lot of letter writing. So I'm hoping that I can empty that one. And uh, I prefer not to... Uh, people ask me, do you... Uh, when you have like one of these very large capacity pens... These will hold two and a half, sometimes even up to three and a half milliliters of ink. What do I do? Do I actually write with all of these and write them dry? Or uh, do I just empty the ink and put it back into the bottle? Or do I chuck it away? Uh, a lot of the time, I will have some of these larger capacity pens inked up for weeks at a time. And I will try and use that ink. Uh, I try not to put the ink back into the bottle just in case because of contamination. Uh, so I will try and use up as much of the ink as I can, and then I will just dump the remaining ink. If I've if I've come to the end of writing with that pen, and I just think, you know what, I want to ink up uh, either another ink in that pen or just another pen instead, then I will just throw away that ink. I guess I could probably keep it in a vial and use it for next time, but I just think, you know what, it's, I guess... I guess it would be a little bit like if you change your oil on your car. You, you could change your oil maybe instead of every 12 months, you could do it every six months and say, yeah, I'm going to keep that oil in a canister and then reuse that oil later on. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that it's probably a good idea. So um, maybe with ink, it's not that bad. Uh, with oil, it would be, I guess. But uh, so I, I do, I will probably use up most of the ink, probably eight or nine tenths of the ink and then I will just uh, flush the rest and ultimately a lot of ink is cheap uh, I do tend to be a little bit more um, different in the approach with say some of the ink that is limited edition that I cannot get hold of anymore so I will then just try and write the pen dry or I will put it into a Panida pen filler and re-ink from there later on the next pen I have and this is inked up, and I re-inked this last week, and 
it was because it was low and it's already low again. Like you can probably just see the amount of ink that I've got in here. So this is a Twisby Vac 700 R. Uh, this is the Iris version, so it's the the sort of rainbow um, sort of torched approach here to the the metal that you can see. Uh, this one has a medium nib, and uh, I did. I think I did say that I was going to ink up a um, probably a couple of broads, one in red and one in green uh, ink. I haven't done that yet. Uh, I may do that next week. Um, I, I do want to do that. Uh, I would like to actually go for a week where I'm just writing letters with the Twisby Vax. So maybe I'll do that um, next week or the week after, perhaps. We'll, we'll see. Uh, I guess it really depends on how I feel, what kind of pen I would like to write with, or in a lot of cases, what colour pen I would like to write with or ink. Uh, but with these, I could put any colour in them. So uh, I think maybe I might just save those for a week where I just don't know. I know what colour I want, but I don't know what pen I want to write with. And then I'll just ink those up. The next pen is a pen that I don't show off that often because it's a little bit of, uh, of an ugly duckling. Um, it's a beautiful writing pen though. And the, the celluloid here, this uh, lapis is uh, blue lapis is is beautiful. So this was a pen that Visconti made to commemorate um, the Rotary Club, and uh, you'll see here um, it it does actually say that here. Um, so this is the Rotary pen for the Rotary Club to commemorate 1905 to 2005. Now I said it's an ugly duckling, and the reason why is I bought this second hand. And the seller on eBay hadn't really been that sort of uh, truthful. They said that there was some oxidization, but not a lot. And you can see here around that gold plated band, there's a lot of damage there. Now this actually, it wasn't oxidation, it was verdigris. And um, verdigris is something that will spread if it's not treated. So I had to treat this manually, and you'll probably see it here as well on that band um, and I had to sort of treat it in uh, ionized water and um, and also uh, some, some solution. And then I was able to carefully try and remove a lot of it, but it's removed some of the gold plating. So in that sense, it's a little bit of an ugly duckling. However, I got it for an insane price. And when I say an insane price, it was cheaper than what it would cost for that 18 karat gold nib. So for me, this is a beautiful pen. I really love writing with it. I do have to be a little bit careful because of this um, verdigris. It hasn't come back, so I think I've neutralized it, but it can spread onto other material, uh, other metals. So I do have to be a little bit careful with that one. So I always keep it really to one side in, in my pen drawers, and, uh, and my pen drawers are always fairly um, um, aerated. So... Uh, I don't sort of have issues with air not circulating in my pen drawers. But I do have to be careful with that one. The next pen I have inked up this week is this one, and it's a Visconti Davina Elegance in the Green. And this is a really beautiful pen. I love this green. When I saw this originally, it this was a, a pen that I really wanted. It was... A lot more than what I wanted to pay for it, and I managed to get a good deal on it uh, from Chris at Truffe at the time. And it was the first pen I bought from Chris, and it was uh, <laughs> I bought a lot of pens since. But um, this this is a, a beautiful pen, and uh, I'll show you here. This has a 21 cat gold nib here. Uh, it's a medium nib, but it's just beautiful. The only issue with these uh, Davinas is that there are two sizes. There's this one, which is an oversized, and then there's what they call a midi or medium, which is a, a smaller version. Uh, this is the oversized, thankfully, but it does have these, uh, it, both versions that ha actually have these captured converters. So it only holds about 0.7 milliliters of ink. Uh, so you do have to just be aware of that. You have to pull this out, twist it to fill and unfill. So it's basically got a converter inside and that knob just uh, allows you to control the piston in the converter. 
And then I have also this one inked up, which is actually the first Davina I actually bought. This is a Davina Desert Spring, and I absolutely love this. It's a celluloid material, and um, there have been a few pens, a few Chastity Luxury exclusives that have been made from this since. I really love this material. It is a beautiful material. Uh, it really is stunning, and uh, it is celluloid. It's not a resin, uh, but this is beautiful. Um, this comes with a 23 cap palladium medium nib again. Uh, again, it's it's an oversized with a captured converter, but I, I just love this pen. Um, but this was one of my earlier Viscontis. It wasn't the first one, but it was one of my earlier Viscontis that kind of got me on the bandwagon for Visconti. Uh, I the first two was my Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog and Florentine Hills. And then I think maybe, I, I would need to look at my database, but I think it might have been the Bronze Age and then this one, the Davina Desert Spring. So uh, it was pretty early on uh, in, um, I don't know, I might have even actually had one or two Van Goghs before that. I think they may have come afterwards, but it, it was very early on anyway. And... and <laughs> Okay, so that's what, two, three, and then four, five, possibly, six pens. I say early on, I have around 70 Visconti. So this was early on in my Visconti collecting. Um, so, or adding Visconti to my collection. So, yeah, it, it definitely was early on. And then the last pen I have inked up here is uh, this was a pen I think I had inked up last week. This is a Visconti Medici Il Magnifico, and this is a Lapis Lazuli. Uh, this is a heavy pen. It's made of marble, made of solid silver in the cap, the uh, power vac knob, and the section, and it's got a gold-plated vermeil. Uh, it has the new style 18 cat gold nib there from Visconti. It's a medium nib. I I love the weight of these. Um, I like that it's very similar in size to the Visconti Homo Sapiens. I like that it's got a slight concave here on the section. I like it's got a hook safe lock mechanism there. But uh, the weight is a lot more than a Homo Sapiens. But this is freezing cold to touch. And this is like touching, if you put something, I don't know, say a can of drink in the freezer. And you pull it out and you go, oh, this is really cold. That's exactly how this feels. Because that marble does not warm up. And nor does this silver. So it does feel very cold in your hand. A very different texture to most pens. But I love this. And, and I love the Medici Il Magnificos. They are really beautiful pens. So I do, do like these a lot. And I do like writing with them. Uh, even though they are a lot more heavier. So I think with that, let's go and do a writing sample. So the first pen I have inked up today is the Visconti Blue Ripple. So let me zoom out just a slight bit. And we'll do an ink swatch. So this is one of the earlier 18 cat gold nibs it's not the later version so Visconti originally did 14 and 18 cat gold bock nibs and then they they uh, moved to a 23 cat palladium bock nib and then they've gone to what is essentially a bock uh engineered nib but in house made in house uh, and that is 18 cat and now also 14 cat gold so this is one of the earlier nibs so this is the Visconti and this is the blue ripple. And I really love how this writes. It writes wet and broad. <laughs> and this is how I like my nibs. So this is a medium 18 cat gold nib. And the ink in here today is Diamine. Imperial. Blue. I wasn't too sure if it was Imperial Purple or Imperial Blue. And to be honest, I should have just looked at the colour of the ink there. Because that, 
definitely is a blue ink. It's not a purple ink. The next pen I have inked up is the Visconti Leonardo da Vinci Machina. So we'll do an ink swatch. Now, this is one of the newer 18 karat gold nibs. And it is, again, it is a medium nib, but it writes more like a fine nib. And a lot of people used to complain about, certainly more with the 23 cap palladium nibs, that there was a lot of inconsistency with nibs, that sometimes they could be rigid, sometimes they could be bouncy or springy. Uh, sometimes a, a medium wrote more like a broad, and sometimes a medium wrote more like a fine. And lo and behold, you still have these problems, whether or not it's on a 23 cap palladium nib or whether or not it's on a 18 cap gold new nib. So this is the Visconti, and it's the Leonardo da Vinci Machna. And it's a medium 18 cat gold nib. And the ink in here is Ackermann SBRE Brown, which I have dedicated to this pen. Now, I just want to go into the, the reason why there are inconsistencies. It is incredibly difficult to make two nibs exactly identical, let alone maybe 10,000 nibs. And there's always going to be differences, uh, different tolerances on how the, the gold or the palladium has heated up and cooled down that will create a more bouncy or, or more rigid nib. Uh, and then you have the nib width. So a nib, and if I can try and show you this here, a nib is cut into a flat piece of gold normally or palladium. And then it is rounded. And then there is a little iridium tip ball that is welded onto the tip. Now, depending on how that melts onto the tip of, the, of that nib that might be a wider or a narrower nib so even though the tines on the nib have actually been cut to precisely a specific width that ball can actually make all the difference because that is what you write with and then they cut the slit which goes through that ball so it really can Depends. So, so a lot of people complain that, oh, a fine nib writes more like a medium or a medium writes more like a broad or a broad writes more like a fine. And yes, they that can happen. And it does happen on a lot of pen manufacturers. Now, a lot of the pen manufacturers will test a nib and will say, OK, this is a medium nib, but it, it should be a fine nib. And a lot of time the nibs are actually engraved with the width designation so you can't just change and say that this is now a fine nib when it was supposed to be a medium nib um, but if the tipping's too wide then you could smooth the tipping down but if the tipping's too narrow then obviously there's nothing you can do there uh, so it does happen and it's not just for sconti so uh, it's just the way things happen with nibs the next pen here I have inked up is a Visconti Homo Sapiens Midnight in Florence. So let's do an ink swatch. Now the other thing also is that this is a medium nib and you can see here that this is writing more like a broad. And this is a slightly more bouncier nib. And when you have a nib that bounces more, it's going to open the tines and let more ink out. Hence why the nib when you write with a little bit of pressure is going to look wider than it should be. So this is a Visconti and I can show you here. There you go on the T. A Visconti Homo Sapiens and it's the Midnight in Florence. And it's a medium, and it's a 23-cat palladium nib. And then the ink in here, 
is a KWZ gummy berry. And I, I think the, the issue is that most of us actually want a medium nib to write like a medium. And and that's really our expectation and, and what we want. But it is incredibly difficult to actually make that happen. And there will always be variances and tolerances and whether or not we like it or not, uh, you will sometimes get medium nibs that write like a fine or a medium nib that writes like a broad. And I think that's probably why I stick more with medium nibs because I know that typically you don't normally get a medium nib that would write like a quadruple board. Although I did have one Pelican M1000 that did. And that was an insane writing nib. And I just, as much as I wanted to write with it, I just found that I couldn't write with it. And I, I did sell it in the end. The next pen I have inked up is the Visconti Homo Sapiens Caput Mundi. And this is a beautiful pen. And I'm just looking here. It's number 7 of 50. There were only 50 of these made. And before you ask, this is long sold out. And before you ask again, no, I'm not selling it. And I, I did have a friend, uh, Gary, that had asked me for several years and kept nagging me if I would sell the pen to him, and I said no. I did, however, though, um, find one for him, and uh, he eventually did buy it. So uh, he now has one, but uh, the, these are rare, 50 only made worldwide. So this is a Visconti Homo Sapiens And it's the Caput's Mundi. Uh, and it's a medium. And it's a 23 cat palladium nib. And the ink in here is um, Pelican. Edelstein. And that is a little bit of a greasy part of the paper there. It's not the nib skipping. Uh, Edelstein, and this is um, Garnet, which is a really lovely red ink. The next pen I have inked up is the Visconti Ducali Palazzo, and this is the Di Sassuolo. Now, I am going to have to look at my notes for this one because this is a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> And a bit of a tricky speller, at least for me. I've not spelt it for a while. So this is, we'll do an ink swatch here. This is inked up with a beautiful orange ink. And it's actually running a bit dry. So I'm going to open up the power back a bit just to let the ink flow down a bit. So this is, and this may actually burp now. Let's see. Uh, this is a Visconti, and it's a Ducali Palazzo. So this is the Ducali Palace. I'm going to do it in Italian. And it's a Di Sassuolo. And it is a medium 18 cat gold nib and then the ink in here is uh, sailor gentle and it's kinmakusai but this is a really really beautiful orange ink and and i love i love that ink and i love this pen uh this pen is a beautiful beautiful pen that you can just see there the next pen i have inked up is oh, dare i say inked up there's hardly any ink in there but this is a twisby vac 700 r iris so we'll do an ink swatch now this is a medium it's a wet writer or semi-wet writer i should say uh but it's a still nib 
uh, it's a rigid nib um, and it writes a little bit narrower than the Visconti Ducali Palazzo. So this is a Twisby. There you go. You can see that there. Vax 700R. I would say that actually this writes more like a fine, to be honest, Western fine. This is the Iris and it's a medium uh, and it's a steel nib. And I don't normally do extra fine, but I would almost say that that could be like an extra fine nib in places. Um, the ink in here is diamine and it is violet. But that, that certainly is, I'd definitely say more of a fine nib, Western fine, uh, than a medium. Then we have this one, and this is the Visconti Rotary. Now, I said that this was a little bit of the ugly duckling, and because of the verdigree damage on the gold plating. Uh, but this nib, I really do love writing with. It's an old style 18 cat gold, and you can see here, the amount of line variation that this nib will actually do. So this is a really lovely line variation. It's a very bouncy nib. A Visconti and it's rotary and it is a medium old style 18 cat gold nib. And then the ink in here today is diamine and I am pretty sure it's aqua blue. <laughs> it's either aqua blue or it's as a blue. I think it's aqua blue. So I'm going to put down aqua blue. I may be wrong there, but I'm pretty sure that is what the ink was. Because I remember putting a light blue ink in there, and I'm pretty sure that's what it was. The next pen is a Visconti Divina Elegance. So this is another medium. It's a 23 cap palladium nib. Now this is more of a uh, rigid nib. It's got a lot less bounce to it. But it doesn't mean that I like it any less than, say, I don't know, the Midnight in Florence, for instance. So this is a Visconti. Oops. Visconti. And it's the Divina. I think it's actually starting to run out of ink. Let's see if I can flood that ink a little bit. Yeah, it's right out of ink. Uh, so it's a Divina Elegance Green and it is a medium 23 cat palladium nib and the ink in here is Diamine Meadow. Now I did actually <laughs> pull this out and twist this so I've emptied the entire converter of ink and there's nothing that's come out of it so this literally is on its last legs so that one i will be cleaning out uh today after this video the next pen is a divina visconti divina elegance uh, in the desert spring and these divinas as i said don't actually hold a lot of ink about 0.7 milliliters. So I find if I'm writing, say, an A4 letter, I can normally write a couple of pages and then it's out of ink. So this is the Visconti Divina. Uh, this is not the, I was going to write elegance actually, it's not. It's the Divina and it's the Desert Spring. And it's a medium. And it's a 23 cat palladium nib. And the uh, ink in here is diamine amaranth. Which is a lovely pink ink. And then the final pen, 
I have inked up this week is the Visconti Medici Il Magnifico in the Lapis Lazuli. So we'll do an ink swatch. Now, this is a medium nib, but it writes a little bit more on the broader side of medium. And it's quite a wet nib. So it's the Visconti and it's the Medici Il Magnifico. And I'll try and get in Lapis Lazuli. And it's a medium 18 cat gold nib. And then the ink in here is Diamine. And it's lavender, which is a lovely lavender color ink. So I think let's go and take a look at these inks one more time. We have a Visconti Blue Ripple in a medium 18 karat gold nib inked up with Diamine Imperial Blue. We have a Visconti Leonardo da Vinci Machina in a medium 18 karat gold nib inked up with Ackermann SBRE Brown. We have a Visconti Homo Sapiens Midnight in Florence in a medium 23 cat palladium nib inked up with KWZ Gummy Berry. We have a Visconti Homo Sapiens Caput Mundi and this is uh, with a medium 23 cat palladium nib inked up with Pelican Edelstein Garnet. We have a Visconti Ducali Palazzo di Sassuolo in a medium 18 cat gold nib inked up with Sailor Gentle Kin Makusai. We have a Twisby Vac 700R Iris in a medium steel nib inked up with Diamine Violet. We have a Visconti Rotary in a medium 18 karat gold nib inked up with Diamine Aqua Blue. We have a Visconti Divina Elegance Green in a medium 23 karat palladium nib inked up or not inked up with Diamine Meadow because it was on its last legs. We have a Visconti Divina Desert Spring in a medium 23 cap palladium nib inked up with Diamine Amaranth. And then we have a Visconti Medici Il Magnifico in the Lapis Lazuli in a medium 18 cap gold nib inked up with Diamine Lavender. So there you have it. That's my currently ink pens for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye bye.